Live from Las Vegas, it's The Q, covering HPE Discover 2017, brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for HPE Hewlett Packard Enterprise Discover 2017. I'm John Furrier, co-host of The Q with Dave Vellante, and our next guest is Bill Philbin, who's the General Manager of Storage at Big Data for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Uh, Bill, welcome to theCUBE again, good to see you. I think you've been Goodness. on since 2012, 13, 15 months. Is that right? Well, are we we've carbon dating ourselves alumni now now We've something? been tracking our CUBE alumni, but uh, you're heading up the storage <laughs> do I, business. Do I get a pin? We're working on that. Jerry okay. Trinick, Jerry, Seven of them. <laughs> Jerry <laughs> Trinick, Raylock wants to have now badge value. So, yeah. welcome back. Thank you, thank you for having me. Um, you, you were just on theCUBE at VMON, which That's is an great. event you, uh, Dave was hosting. I missed it in New Orleans, but a lot, lot, lot of stuff going on around storage. Certainly virtualization's been around for a while, but now with cloud, whole new ball game programmable infrastructure, hybrid IT, uh, Wikibon's true private cloud report came out showing that you know, private cloud on-prem is $250 billion market. Right. So nothing's really changing radically on the enterprise per se, mm -hmm. certainly maybe servers and storage, but people got to store the data. That's right. What's the update from your perspective? What's the story here at HPE Discover? So I think there's, there's really three things we're talking about amongst uh, a, a number of announcements. One is sort of the extension of our all flash environment for customers who, you know, as I was saying at Veeam, have it's always on, right? You know, the, the, the new world order is we expect everything to be available at, at a moment's notice. I was in the middle of the Indian Ocean using Google Voice over satellite IP on the boat talking to San Jose and it worked. That's always, that's always on environment. And the best way to get that is you know, with an all flash data, so that's number one. Number two, going back to the story about you know, programmable infrastructures, right? Storage also needs to be programmable. And so you know, if you've, you've had Rick Lewis, or Rick Lewis is coming, he'll talk about composable infrastructures with Synergy. But the flip side of that is our belief that storage really needs to be invisible. And the acquisition of Nimble gets us a lot closer to, to sort, of, sort of doing that uh, in the same way that you have a safe self-driving car is, is the, all the rage, right? So all that rich telemetry comes back, it's analyzed, fingerprinted, and sent out to customers to a point where, it's, I call it the rule of 85. 85% of the customers, the cases are raised by InfoSight and closed by InfoSight, and they have an 85 net promoter score. We're getting to a point where storage can be invisible, because that's the experience you get on a Amazon or an Azure, you swipe your credit card, say I want 10 terabytes of storage, and that's the last time you have to think about it. We need to have the economics of the web, we need to have the programmability of the web, that's number two. And number three, what we talked about, and this is a big, big issue, uh, or a big thing we talked about with Veeam on, was uh, data protection. The rules of data protection are also changing. Conventional backup does not protect uh, data. I was at a, with a customer a couple weeks ago in London, 120 petabytes, this is a financial services customer now, 120 petabytes of storage, not unusual. 40 of it was Hadoop. And they were surprised because it's unprotected, it's on servers, you know, it's sort of the, the age of the, you know, it's sort of the age of, um, you know, client server and the age of Excel spreadsheets all over again. We realized that most businesses were running on Excel, so all flash, a different way of supporting our customers support experience, and number three, it's all around how do you protect your data differently. What's the big uh, trend from your standpoint? Because I love that self-driving storage concept or self-driving car analogy, yeah. because it, it speaks to simplicity and automation. That's right. Uh, the other thing that's going on is data is becoming more relevant, certainly in the cloud, whether that's in data protection impact or having data availability for uh, cloud native apps or in memory, all kinds of cool stuff going on. Yeah. So you got a lot of stuff happening. So to be invisible and be programmable, Customers' architectures are changing. What's the big trend that you're seeing from a customer standpoint? Are there new ways to lay out storage so that they can be invisible? Certainly a lot of people are looking at you know, their, their, their simplification in IT operationally mm -hmm. and then have to prepare for the cloud, whether that's multi-cloud or hybrid or true right. private cloud. What architectures are you seeing changing? What are people doubling down on? What's the big trends in storage, kind of laying out storage as a strategy? So I think if you think about storage in the large, um, one of the trends, obviously, that we're seeing is, you know, uh, is sort of storage co-located with the server, right? When I started at HP now seven years ago, Gen 6 to Gen 10, which we've announced here at the show, the amount of locally attached storage in the box itself is, is massive, right? And then the applications are now becoming more and more responsible for data placement and, and data replication. And so, you know, even while capacities are growing, I think six or seven percent is what I saw from the latest IDC survey, the actual storage landscape 
um, from, a, from a shared storage company are actually going down. And the reason is application provisioning, application uh, aware uh, storage is really, the, is really the trend. That's sort of, that's sort of number one. Number two, you see customers looking at deploying the right storage for the right applications. Hyperconverge with SimpliVity is a really good, really good example of that, which is that they're trying to find you know, the right sort of uh, storage to sort of serve up the right, the right application. And that's where if you're a single point provider company now in storage, and you don't have a software only, a hyperconverged, an all flash and a couple different flavors, including XP at the top, you're going to find it very, very difficult to sort of continue to compete in this market. And we're, you know, frankly, we're driving a lot of that consolidation. We put some bookends around what we're prepared to pay for. But if you're a point providing storage company now, life is a lot harder for you than it was, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. I mean, when we started with all flash, I, I think it was like 94 all flash companies. There are not 94 all flash companies uh, today. And so I think that's sort of what we see. Well, to your point about point companies are going to have a hard time remaining independent. Yeah. Um, and that's why a lot of them are in business to basically sell to a, a company like yours right. because they fill a need. So my question relates to R&D strategy as the, mm -hmm. as the GM, relatively new GM. You know well that a large company like HPE has to participate in multiple markets and in right. order to, to expand your team, you have to have the right product at the right time. Right. One size does not fit all. That's right. So the nimble acquisition brings in a capability at the, at the lower end of the market, lower mm -hmm. price bands, but it also has some unique attributes with regard to the way it, it uses data and analytics. That's right. You've got you know, three par, you know, legendary at mm -hmm. the high end. What's the strategy in terms of, and is there one, to, to bring the best of those, both, both of those worlds together, or is it sort of let, you know, 20 flowers bloom? So, uh, I don't know if it's going to let me let, let 20 flowers bloom, but I would probably answer a couple different ways. One is that InfoSight, you're right, is unique, um, um, you know, value proposition as far as nimble. I would bet if I come see you in Madrid, if you have me back for the whatever, the 13th time, <laughs> Um, that we'll be talking about how InfoSight and 3 Park can come together. Okay, so that's sort of uh, answer number one. Answer number two is, even though uh, within the Nimble acquisition, one party acquired the other party, what we're really looking at is the best of breed of, of, uh, of both organizations, whether it's a process, a person, a technology, we don't feel wedded uh, to, you know, just because we do it a certain way at HP, that means the Nimble team must conform. It's really bring us the best and brightest. That's what we got. At the end of the day, we got a company, we got revenue, but we got the people. And in and and, and this storage business, it, you know, these are serial entrepreneurs who've actually developed the product. We want to keep, we want to keep those people. And the way you do that is you bring them in and you use the best and, and greatest of all the technologies. There's probably other optimizations we'll look at, um, but you know, looking at InfoSight across the entire portfolio, and one day maybe across the server portfolio, um, is the right thing to and, do. And, and just to follow up on that, John, yeah. if I may, so th that's a hardcore sort of embedded technology, and then you've got a capability, you know, we talk about the API economy all yeah. the time. How are you, and are you able to leverage other HPE activities to create sort of infrastructure as code, specifically within the, within the storage group? So if you look at, um, you know, uh, you look at our, sort of our converged uh, systems appliances, like our SB HANA appliance, uh, Database is greater than six terabytes. We have 85% market share at Hewlett Packard. And the way we do that is we've, and that's all on three par, by the way. And the way we do that is we've got, we've got a fixed system that is designed solely to, to deliver HANA. On the flip of that, you have Synergy, right, which is a, a composable programmable infrastructure from the, from the start, where it's all template based and based on application provisioning. You provision storage, you provision the fabric, you provision compute. That programmable infrastructure also is supported by, by um, HP storage, right? And so you have, you know, you have the, you can roll it the way you want to. It's an, and it's to some degree, I think it's all about choice. If you want to go along and build your own programmable infrastructure on OpenStack or, you know, vCloud Direct or whatever it is, we have one of those. If you think, you know, simplicity is key and app and uh, server integration is an important part of how you want to roll it out, we have one of those. That's called SimpliVity. If you want a traditional shared storage environment, we have one of those at 3Par and Nimble, and if you want composable, we have that. Now, choice means more than one. I don't know what it means in Itali Latin or Italian, but I'm pretty sure choice means more than one. What we don't want to do is introduce, however, the complexity of what owning more than one is, and that's where things like synergy makes sense, or federation between 
store virtual and 3PAR. Soon we'll have federation between Nimble and, and, and 3PAR. So to help customers with that operational complexity, uh, complexity problem. But we actually believe that choice is the most important thing we can provide a customer. I've always been a big fan of the Compose thing, going yeah. back a couple of years when you guys came in and brought it yeah. out to the market. We're first, by the way, uh, props to HP, also first on converged infrastructure yeah. uh, way back in the day. I got to ask you, one of the things I love doing with the Cube interviews is that we get to kind of get inspiration around some of the things that you're working on yeah. in your business unit. Back in 2010, Dave and I really kind of saw storage move from being boring storage, provisioning storage, to really at the center of the action. And really since 2010, you see storage really at the center of all these converging trends. Virtualization, That's right. um, and, and, and converge, hyper converges, all this great stuff, now cloud. So storage is kind of like the center point of all the action. So yeah. I got to ask you the question on, virtualization certainly changed the game with storage. Mm -hmm. Containerization is also changing the game. That's so right. I was talking to some HP Labs guys last night, they're looking at provisioning containers in uh, microseconds. Mm -hmm. So where virtualization is extending and continuing to have a nice run, on the heels of that, we got containerization, That's where right. apps are going to start working with storage. Yeah. What's your vision and how do you guys look at that trend? How are you riding that next wave? So I, it's, it's all about, a good, it comes down to um, uh, an application-driven approach, right? And so uh, as, it, as we were saying a little earlier, um, our view is that storage will be silent. You're going to provision an application. That's really the, if you see, look at the difference between us and, a, and a, let's say a Nutanix with SimpliVity, right? It's all about the application being provisioned into the hyper-converged uh, hyper environment. Um, and if you look at the virtualization um, business alone, I mean, you know, VMware's going to have a tough go because Hyper-V has actually gotten good enough and, and it's cheaper that people are really giving Hyper-V uh, a much better look at than we've seen over the course of the last couple of years. But guess what? That too will commoditize. And the next commoditization point is going to be, uh, you know, uh, is going to be containers. So, you know, our vantage point, and if you look at 3PAR, you look at uh, Nimble, we already got, we've already supported containers uh, within the product. We've actually invested companies that are, are, have, are container rich. I think it's all about, you know, what's the next sort of... And we had Docker on last year, yeah. so we know you're partnering with those, all the guys. That's right. But this is a big wave. I mean, you see containers as... Uh, I see containers as sort of the, uh, you know, sort of the, the place that virtualization sort of didn't ever, you know, sort of uh, get to. I mean, if you look the at... the apps. The, on, the, on the apps, absolutely, yeah. uh, positively. And also, it's a much simpler way to sort of deploy an application over a conventional, a conventional VM. So, I think containers will be, will be important. Is it going to be important as the, te te the technology inflection point around all flash? That? Flash I, is certainly very that relevant. That I don't know. Um, but I think uh, as far as limiting costs in your data center, making it easier to deploy your applications, uh, et cetera, I think containers is... Uh, What's the big news here at HPE Discover 2017 yeah. for you guys? What's the, what's the story that you're telling? What's going on at the booth? Share some uh, insight into what's happening yeah, so here on the ground in Las Vegas <laughs> from, from your standpoint. So I, I would say uh, you know, a couple of things. I think if you look out on the show floor, it seems more intimate and, 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 and smaller this year. And, and there's a lot of concern, I think, that you know, HP is chopping itself off into various pieces and parts. I think the story that um, maybe we're not telling well enough, or that that you know that uh, it, it gets missed. Is out of that is a, actually a brand new company called Hewlett Packard Enterprise, uh, which is uniquely focused on serving enterprise infrastructure customers. And so I think if I was going to encourage a news story, it's about the phoenix of that, and not the fact that you know we've taken the ES yeah. guys and the software guys and the PC guys. It's that that company. Maybe in Madrid we'll do this. Yeah. And that company. That's really, really, really exciting. And as you said, storage, sort of in a Ptolemy or versus Galileo approach, <laughs> right? We believe everything revolves around storage, right? We don't, we don't believe in Gal Gal uh, Galileo. So, so if you look at here at the booth, we've announced the next generation of uh, MSA platforms of 2052. We've got the 9450 three par, three times as fast, more connectivity for all flash solutions. We've um, talked about the secondary flash array for Nimble. Most effective place to protect your data is on an array, is on a pipe where the data came from, yeah. and that is a secondary flash market. We're big into cloud. We've talked about CloudBank here, which is the ability to keep a copy of your StoreOnce data uh, in any S3 compliant interface, including Scality. And then, um, what am I forgetting? I'm sort of, sort of forgetting, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but... Uh, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. I mean, you guys, I love, I love your, your angle on the Phoenix 
I think you know, we've been seeing that, we've been covering seven years now, yeah. uh, and it is a phoenix, and, and the point that I think the news media is not getting on HP, it's a lot of FUD out there, yeah. is that this is not a divestiture strategy. No. I mean, there's some things that went away that were you know, the outsourcing business, but that was just natural, but this is HP owned. I mean, it's not like it's like we're getting out of that, it's just how you're organizing it. I mean, yeah. and, and with a balance sheet that now is, is, is a really a competitive uh, weapon, if you will, you're going to see HP both grow organically and inorganically, and I think as the market continues to consolidate, yeah. um, the thing to remember also is there's fewer places to consolidate to. Yeah. And so if you're a startup, there's a handful of companies that you can go to yeah. now, and they're probably the best equipped, uh, right-sized, great balance sheet, uh, great, great company is Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Well, we had hoped to get Chris Hsu on, but you know, I've always said the day we talk about the, the debates on management style, but. I've always been a big believer as a computer science uh, undergraduate. Yeah. Decouple highly cohesive strategy is a really viable one. I think that's a great one. Yeah, and, and there's still a great partnership with DXC. There'll be a great par partnership with, with Microfocus, right? Uh, and there's both financially as well as uh, from a business perspective. Um, but it's, an, it's real an opportunity to focus. And if I was at another company, I would wonder uh, whether or not their strategy is, uh, yeah. continues to be appropriate. Bill Philbin, Senior Vice President, General Manager of Storage and Big Data at Hewlett Packard Enterprises. It's theCUBE, more live coverage after this short break from Las Vegas, HP Discover 2017. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante with theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.